Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. You'd probably think it was October if you were looking at that sky and you were here today. It's not very warm, we don't seem to have had the best start to a British summer. But hey ho, we're gardeners, we must carry on. Now if you remember from last week during the plot tour, I did have a lot of tidying up and weeding to do. So where it's been quite warm and we've had a lot of rain, the weeds have germinated all over the place. So it is going to be a day of tidying up. It's quite a few beds that I'd like to get done, but also the wild area is looking quite raggedy at the moment. I know that I shouldn't worry too much about the way that it looks for the wildlife, but I would like to plant it up a bit better next year. So I do want to have a look and see what space we've got down there. We should probably start in the bean bed because that looks ridiculous at the moment. Come on, let's get stuck in. There we go, they are all the beans out and all the weeds out. I've left the two tomato plants in, so we've got one here and one just here as well. This one has got blight, so I'll take you in for a closer look. And we've got a Verbena bonariensis, which seems to have self-seeded, so we're gonna keep that in there as well. And on the next bed back, so this one, we've got the leeks, which I sowed probably about three weeks ago. Um, I'm not hoping for any big leeks, they're just to use as little baby leeks. And we've also got the red vein sorrel in there as well. When I was weeding, I did pull a few of the red vein sorrel up accidentally, but we, we seem to have a few plants in there. And then right at the back in the far bed, this is where we have got the beetroot and they seem to have come up absolutely fine. Never seem to have a problem with the beetroot at all. So we should get some of that in early winter. I've also just pulled out some of the grass from this little bed down here. I do need to give that a real good makeover, but I'll probably leave that until the autumn time. But let's take you into this tomato just here, as we do seem to have a little bit of blight on this. This is a perfect example of why to always stake your tomatoes and also keep on top of the pruning, because otherwise it will get blight. So blight, it's a mould and it travels through the air onto your plants and you'll find blight happens every year. They can affect your tomatoes and your potatoes and really anything from the nightshade family. Blight thrives in really hot and humid conditions. So with the really wet summer that we've had this year, blight has come a lot earlier. There are a couple of websites out there where you can keep track of your blight, but you'll find that they'll affect your outdoor tomatoes more than your greenhouse or polyhouse. This is why it's really important to stay on top of your pruning and remove any foliage that you don't need, as this will just reduce the surface area and the chances of you getting blight on your plant. First signs of blight are that you'll notice these black splodges appearing on the leaves, and these leaves will soon start to dry up and crisp up on the plant. You'll also notice these black splodges starting to appear along the stems of your plant. That's the next sign that it's starting to really develop. Now, unfortunately, I've noticed the blight a little bit late on this plant, but if you catch it early, you can sort of reduce the chances of it getting onto your crop because the final signs of blight is that you'll notice the black splodges starting to appear on your actual fruit. That's why we're going to get in here and try and rescue as many of the tomatoes as possible. I'm going to go in and start removing all of the side shoots and also all of the flowers because those flowers aren't going to produce any tomatoes for us this year. The whole idea of this is to protect the fruit that's already on there and hopefully they'll ripen without catching the blight. Once I've removed the side shoots and the flowers I can then start removing the really diseased pieces of the stem but hopefully keeping those trusses attached to the plant. Thank you. 
there we have it. Hopefully those tomatoes will ripen off without catching any blight. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give these a quick rinse with some jade fluid just to make sure that we wipe off all of that horrible blight mould on there, especially if we're going to go and chop down any other tomatoes that haven't got blight. As for all of this, this is going to come home with me and go in the green waste so that this can either be burned or disposed of by the council. We don't want this stuff in our compost heap. So this is what blight on a tomato looks like. You can see that dark blemish circle on the actual fruit. I mean, it's orange, it's ripened, but just by feeling that, you can feel that there's something not right quite there. Um, and it's also starting to grow quite a bit of mold under there as well. So although this plant actually isn't showing blight on the stems, the fruit does seem to have got it already. Let's cross our fingers and toes and hope that we get some dry weather because if it's too wet then these are all either going to rot off on the soil or they're all going to catch blight. So some dry weather should ripen these off for us. The plan was to give this area a real good doing over. It is starting to look a little bit wild and a bit unkept. So I thought about removing some of the dead foliage. However, I've noticed that there's so much that's already starting to self seed in there. There's bugs that are still using the space and there's still plenty to flower. So I think I'm gonna focus on the vegetable beds a little bit more. I'm gonna give this area another few more weeks. Then I can come in, collect some of those seeds and really start stripping it back. I won't be able to divide and split any of the perennials just yet. You really want to wait until they're in their dormant stage. So it would just be a matter of clearing it up and seeing what sort of space I've got so that I can really plant it up properly next year. One must do job today is harvest what's in the poly house. So come on, let's go in and see what we can find. The marigolds really have taken off this year, but just look at all the tomatoes. I haven't been down for a little while, so we need to go in there, harvest as many as the tomatoes as possible. And I think we've got a few cucumbers that can come home as well, and maybe a lemon apple one. These are four of the lemon apple cucumbers. They really have turned quite prolific, but I think that one on the far left is ready to come home. So it's gonna be a first time try and I'll let you guys know what I think tomorrow. This little fella down here, this is the aubergine. So we've got a fruit and I'm gonna let him grow as long as possible. So I'll give him another month and he should get quite large because he is the only fruit on there. So fingers crossed, we might be able to make a moussaka. Got these four cucumbers on the cucumber tower as well. They're plenty big enough to come home. So I think we'll harvest these and give a couple away because they don't last too long in the fridge. One job I'll sort out whilst I'm here is remove a lot of the top growth. So we don't want these plants to be growing any taller. So I'll cut them down and also a lot of the leaves as well because we want the plant to start putting the energy into ripening the fruit rather than making the plant any bigger. Also, any flowers that you've still got, I'd remove those because even if they do turn into tomatoes, they're not going to get big enough and they definitely won't ripen. Not a bad little harvest of tomatoes, so some for the salad, and then we'll make a nice pasta sauce with the rest. These are the gold field climbing beans. So they're a slender yellow pod, and I haven't tried these before, so we're gonna harvest some of these and take them home tonight and see what these taste like. I need to pull these carrots up so that we have some space ready tomorrow for our August sowing video.
That is one hefty carrot. Look at the size of it. I can't even get my hand all the way around it. That is one girthy carrot. So from the world's girthiest to a pretty long one. I don't think I've ever grown one that long before. I'm as chuffed as monkeys with that little harvest. Not bad for the beginning of August at all. Time really has flown today I don't know where it's gone but I have been able to get this area done which was a big thing I wanted to get ticked off the to-do list and we have sorted out a lot of the tomato plants around the plot too I have harvested quite a bit so I'm quite happy with what we've got done I'll be back again tomorrow and then again on Sunday anyway so I'll bring you guys along but don't forget guys to subscribe like comment all of that good stuff and I'll see you all again very soon so take care guys bye bye